Hey everyone, I'm Ray. I'm the head of marketing over here at Fresh Paint. Um, and I'm joined today by Mapolo Basing, who is a Fresh Paint customer. Hey Mapolo, how's it going? Great. How are you? Doing good, man. Um, Mapolo, would you mind just for the folks who are viewing, can can you just give us a quick intro and tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, my you know, my name is Mapolo. I'm a director of product at at Charlie Health. Um, I've been in in product management, probably for eight or nine years now. Uh, worked at you know several health tech uh, companies and startups. Um, and yeah, I love I love analytics. <laughs> That's awesome. What I mean, just for just for fun to make it personal. What what's well, obviously you you obsess over product marketing for work. You've been doing that for a while. What, what's something you you obsess over when you're not working? Yeah, I think there's a couple of things right now. It's it's wrestling. I coach uh, high school wrestling, and yeah, we had a super exciting match last night. Uh, it, it ended up tie, and there was a bunch of like tie breaking criteria, and we went on on like the ninth criteria. So it was a really exciting match, and just love working with with the kids and seeing them grow uh, as human beings. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about, and you know, you've been doing this for a while as a product manager. Can can you just walk us through a little bit about how you got started? Yeah, so I actually used to be a civil engineer. Um, I worked worked on hospitals and structures, and uh, I had a friend who worked at a startup as a project manager. He he told me I'd be good at it, and so I switched over and became a project manager. I did that for like three or four years. Really got my feet wet in the space like understanding how software is built developed um learn a bunch of different things i really felt like i could move into product uh product management so you know i've convinced convinced our team at, at location labs that that i could be a product manager and so they gave me a shot at it so one of the things i did was i was trying to figure out like how how folks signed up for for our product and uh, you know, we had a stream of sign up, but like I didn't, we didn't really know where they were coming from. And I thought, like, well, the biggest impact I could make is just figuring out how people sign up, and if I could drive a little improvement there, that would be a, a huge win. It might, and people might notice. So, so I essentially bribed one of our engineers who I was kind of managing another project on, and I asked him to introduce a little snippet on our on our kind of sign up landing page to to capture where folks were coming from. So this is like the the URL that they were they were coming from. And so our product was a white label product with with one of the major cell phone carriers. And so I ended up getting this massive list of like all these URLs from this carrier. And then I found, you know, through through the product analytics that I think like 40 or 50 percent of our our uh you know impressions on that that web page were coming from this one url but compared to all the other all the other like urls it was its conversion was way way less it was like five percent and everyone else was like 30 or 40 percent so i was like huh this is like really odd so <clears throat> found that link and and i saw on that page that we had like their page had a really strong value prop like, hey, this is what this is going to solve. And then when you clicked on that link, it just got dropped and you got asked to pay for the product and you didn't know what the product was. And so, yeah, I grabbed a designer. We built like a very simple three screen carousel that they would hit before they they were asked to pay. And that conversion went went up higher than even like the other channels. And so uh because of the the way all the math worked out i boosted boosted signups for a product with like in like uh by 50 percent with just like you know i don't know a few a few hours or a few days of of development time and so yeah it was a lot it was a lot of work but without without those analytics <clears throat> i you know i i would have been nowhere and so that kind of put me on that path to like find out that solution and one thing that was fun after that, it seemed like I got noticed within the product team. Uh, our our head of product actually made all the other PMs build out build out journeys for their product. So, so that was fun. Um, but yeah, then I you know they put me in 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 charge of you know bigger and and more important products uh, after that. It's a, I love that story for two reasons. One, it's a great it's a great example of like 
without the analytics, you wouldn't have known where to look for, you know, to find the problem. And without the analytics, you wouldn't have been able to measure like if the, you know, it, like saliently, it's a great thesis, like let's just create a better experience. But like, if you're not able to measure the result, you, you, you just would never be able to tell that story. Yeah, the analytics in, in this case, it was like, it showed me where to look. And then yeah. I looked and then like, and then you, then you, then it comes like, okay, this isn't a good experience. How do I make it a better experience? But like, you know, the analytics paired with, paired with the user research, paired with the, the design, you know, an understanding of your customers, that's what kind of ties it all together. And then at the end of the day, when you're done, you can just show them a cool graph that says, look what happened. It went up 50% and, yep. and, and no one can argue with you. That's right. Um, so after that, you, you've gone on and continued this, you know, career in pro in, in products. I think you've had, you know, this is going to be like Charlie's your fifth company now. When, when you start, like when you start a new role, like I think you've fairly recently moved over to Charlie. How do you approach that? What's your framework to approaching the new role? Yeah. So the, the first thing I do is try to orient myself around the customer user, uh, people, the people that are using buying our product. And so what that typically looks like is I'll shadow. If you have a sales team, I'm shadowing, I'm shadowing sales calls just to see what their conversations are like. If you want to know how your product you know, works or how your customers perceive your product, go on a sales call. Cause the, the folks that are demoing are going to be demoing the things that that customers care about. And so I'd always start there. I'd also talk with customer success. If you, if you're, if your product has like an onboarding experience, shadow those onboarding calls. Um, and then the third thing is, is see what people are doing in your product. So I always lead on analytics. So I've, I've done that. I've talked to customers. I've seen what they've been doing. I've seen sales, but then I also want to kind of pair that and validate that with some, with some analytics. So um, I try to pair, pair like talking with customers with seeing how they actually actually use the the product because sometimes those things are are not uh, aligned and there's a lot of interesting questions or things you want to dive into there yeah like in some ways the product analytics can just show you right away where the drop off is in the funnel and then session replays and customer interviews can help you understand like why you know why are they dropping off there what's happening there and 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 then you kind of have some ways to kind of de-risk your roadmap and prioritize going forward yeah what advice, since you've been through this before, what advice would you give to the PMs that are on, on this call? What advice would you give to them if they're struggling to get their management on board? Yeah, so I've dealt with different ends of the spectrum on this. Like some, some places I've gone into, I've been like, hey, yeah, we need product analytics. And that's usually because someone up in leadership has had that in the past and seen the value of it. So it's not a hard conversation, but there's definitely places, especially early stage or, you know, founders that maybe haven't, haven't uh, had a ton of experience at, at other startups or, or other, other companies, and they may not really understand the value of analytics, or maybe they think what they have now is, is, is good enough. So my recommendation would be always, always start at, always start at the top and, and figure out, figure out what the leadership team cares about. So, the the one practical tip that I would give that's worked out really well for me is I just ask all the like when I'm thinking about hey I need to roll out analytics I ask all the all the leadership teams or all the stakeholders to write out all the questions they have about the about our customers and it's very easy for them it takes them five minutes they come up with a huge laundry list of questions um, and then I'll just bucket them there's usually like some very common themes that come up. And, and I can say, hey, okay, I'm going to answer these questions with some product analytics. And that's how I, that's how I kind of pitch it to, to the team. Um, and then I'll, that'll actually feed into when I start rolling out, rolling out analytics across the organization. So almost like, cause everyone will have, everyone will have like a set of really strong questions. And it, basically you're saying in some case, if analytics isn't there, a lot of those questions are going to be very difficult to answer for people. And so the next step for you to answer them, which there is an appetite to get those questions answered, is let's get some baseline of analytics in place so I can come back to you with with, with results. 
Yeah, and, and most most small startups when they don't have that in place, it's it's like everyone has a different opinion about the answer to all those questions based on their their own experience, and that's where like an unbiased data set can kind of guide folks or or unify folks around what what the actual what the actual answer to that question is. Is that how that conversation, like you're in the room with all the executives, maybe the founders of the startup, is that how that conversation goes? Like, is it everyone has their opinion to these questions? And do you do you call out that like we actually don't have a way to measure that quantitatively? So it would be helpful for us to like pair those opinions with with that actual result. Is that is that exactly how the conversation goes for you? Yeah, I mean, usually, usually it comes in the form of like you're talking about a roadmap or prioritization, and so yeah. it's like, hey, I'm trying to I'm trying to prioritize this project or initiative or at the company or this feature, and so you're weighing weighing different features, and then each each team, you know, sales is going to have one take on this is the most important feature. Uh, customer success is going to be like, hey, this is causing the most tickets, and da da da. And, uh, you know, everyone, everyone, there's like that tension of like, which, which thing do we wait the most and having an unbiased analytics take that you can use, you know, you're still always going to have that, but maybe you have this, you have this other, other party in the room that can, that can help, you know, squelch some of the, some of the tension or unify folks around, uh, uh, an idea or data, um. So yeah, that's how it that's how it usually forms. That's cool. Do you, I know the early success story of like you know juicing signups by fifty percent? Is there another time that you can think of more recently where you had you know you weren't able to answer a question, um, but analytics actually helped you like answer it and it, ha- it had a big impact? Like, can, can you think of any other time? Yeah. So. Um, and if you were going to start up, board meetings are always a thing. And so like every, every, every three months or six months, if you're, if you're like leading a product team or, or you'll just, sometimes the CEO will just slack you and they'll just ask you random questions and you don't really know the context, uh, but you know, it's for like a board meeting and they're going to present it at, at this board meeting or something, or they're trying to dive into or answer some question that some board member had. So yeah, there was, there was one situation at, at, at Ozmind, where we were trying to figure out, we had this this kind of feature that we had piloted, and we were trying to figure out uh, some information about engagement, and uh, we didn't really have it well tracked um, at the time, and so it either required like an engineer to go look in a database and write some queries, and um, so the CEO asked me to asked me to investigate. I went in, I used. Fresh paint to just basically auto track the the button click, and it, it's not going to be a precise answer about exactly how many how many times someone interacted with the feature, but I could you know very very easily show like hey this is like in the ballpark of how many times this is how it's been growing month over month, um, and show a graph, and and then you're off and running. So re- really quickly in that case it's it's amazing because I don't I don't need to talk to engineering I don't need to go through a cycle of of sprints to get something implemented I could get an answer to her right away um and have high confidence that 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 data is is good well what was yeah I mean that like our our CEOs like whenever we can like they're on the spot sometimes trying to like answer a question right that's really what this is about and and it, it can be reactive what what was the outcome there? Like, how did that impact your relationship with the CEO being able to like get get that answer that she needed? Yeah, so I, I think it builds trust, you know, and so so much in in software is is de- developing trust with your teams, executives, leadership. Um, you know, ultimately, like if as you're trying to grow in your career, one way to grow is is be be it be an asset for your for your for your manager for your boss. Um, if you can prove that you can deliver on things, they'll come back to you more and more. Um, yeah, I think there's often a perception that managers need to manage you, but often you know it's on you to kind of manage up, know what they need, know what they want provide that and that's what'll help help grow you in your career and get promoted. 
Yeah, it's really credibility and trust are so key because you you need that buy-in to get you also need that buy-in to get the time you need to figure things out, right? A lot of this is is trial and error and experimentation. I love that. Um, you you've built a couple of teams now on the product side. So you move from you move from like self-starter, you know, product manager, and now you're leading product teams. When when you're thinking about scaling your team and and you know building that team of PMs. How how do you think about your team as it relates to analytics? Like, what do you what do you look for? What do you look for in your team? Yeah, so uh, you know, on the the product the product side, there I think there's so many. It's a very like broad skill set. I think that you need to be a successful product manager. You need to be able to communicate. You need to be able to communicate with design and understand design, understand funnels, understand the business and what's important and lifetime value yada 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 and then uh but on the on the analytics side you know when you're in the day-to-day of, uh, and the weeds of like trying to build a product the things that i'm looking for in analytics is like do you understand a funnel do you understand what retention is and and why that's important for the business um do you do you understand what drives retention so when i'm doing an interview and and I'm I'm diving into a question like I I want to hear folks talk about oh yeah we saw we implemented this thing we saw higher engagement and then ultimately that helped drive retention on our product or you know we made this change to improve this funnel and improve engagement in the product and so I'm looking for um, you know that story of of building something of creating something but also uh an analysis that comes with it and like capturing capturing those success metrics love and, that. And, and using that through analytics yeah where like I, for me like I've been, I've been doing i've been doing startups for a long time and i feel like i'm constantly learning new things <laughs> i don't i don't have all, i don't have all the answers and i don't i don't even have a playbook right just some frameworks and, and <laughs> bunch of tactics because it changes constantly yeah i, I imagine like you know, newer PMs, it's, it's a fire hose. There's a lot, there's a lot to learn, right? So where do you direct your team to try to like continue their learning? Yeah. So, so for, for product analytics, um, it's been, it's just been, it's been around for a while now and it's been a growing field. So, or, or, you know, there's like so much, there's so much content out there, so much great content out there. So the places that I usually direct people is Mixpanel has a great, retention playbook and it was one of the first things i read it's it's long but it's super detailed and i think it covers like a ton of what you need to know in terms of analytics you can really dive in beautiful illustrations well written um it's free it just costs you your email address and and marketing from amplitude <laughs> uh, sorry it's it's amplitude i just amplitude yeah a- amplitude yeah mastering retention um, I also recently took, and this is a plug for the old product school. They didn't, they didn't pay me anything for this. Okay. <laughs> I recently, I recently took their, their mix panel, uh, course. Um, and that was super useful, uh, in my, for myself, uh, I hadn't used mix panel for a while and I had, um, you know, got to, got to learn and build out charts and learn about a bunch of new functionality that I didn't, didn't know about. So there's like, there's great tools out there. Just Google them, but but those are two that like, hey, if you want hands-on experience, check out that mixed panel product school um, uh, what, uh, class. I think it's a, you can get a certificate. Um, it takes a couple hours and then check out Mastering Retention uh, by Amplitude. That's, those are awesome tips and nice nice plug for everyone here who's part of product school already. So it should, should be something they can access. I guess the last question we have is like specifically <clears throat> around, you know, implementing analytics. I've actually spent the last couple of months having a hundred plus discovery calls with with product leaders around like some of the challenges that they've had. And it's it's difficult to get like this buy-in. It's difficult to like prop up analytics. It's it's difficult to like get buy-in from engineering to create new events. Like what what are some tips and tricks that that you can share about that? Yeah, so I would always start start small. You know, I talked earlier about creating like getting getting all the questions out there from all the stakeholders yeah. and when you look at all those questions you can probably answer them with a handful of handful of events you know i think actually mixed panel and their onboarding they they basically ask you to implement i think it's one or two events 
And then they build like this beautiful dashboard for you. And I think it's it's to get at this point of like, hey, we you want to with the smallest amount of work, you want to show that this is a, something valuable. Um, and so, yeah, so like I would start really small, think about those questions and then plan out how you're going to how you're going to implement those few events in the uh, minimum amount of time possible. Share those out. So as soon as you get them, as soon as you start seeing those data, share them out. Like one, once I implement mixed panel, I'm like the next week is like marketing. I'm just like, here, look at this chart. Look at this chart. I'm just getting everyone to see, you know, what what's out there in the org. Um, and and that that really then it then it kind of feeds itself. People will ask questions and you'll be like, yeah, I can do that. Let me implement another event on there. Um, and there's also, you know, one thing that I love about Fresh Paint is they have this auto tracking feature and they also have this historical playback. So one of the one of the things is once you can implement very cheaply and get a baseline of everything. And and that was super valuable because instead of instead of going your going your team be like, hey, we're gonna have to spend a sprint and implement a bunch of the analytics, you can say, hey, I have a story. I, it can be done in like an hour, put it on there, and then I can get some baseline. And so your your upfront investment is small and you can get uh, at least a, a baseline of analytics. You can very quickly get uh, a lot of a lot of information uh, that is valuable um, at low cost. Do you mind if I share a visual with uh, everyone who's tuned in? Because I think I think this visual helps kind of un like illustrate a little bit about what you talked about. Yeah, sure. So let me share my screen here with everybody. So this is this is. Could you talk to this a little bit, Mapolo? The, the just for everyone who's all the PMs out there who are watching this. Basically, like what Mapolo is saying is the the conventional way of implementing event tracking. Uh, there's a process. Like you you have a process here, and it takes time. Conservatively, a month. Some will peg it at much longer than a month. Um, can you just talk through this visual, like what 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 you see here? Yeah. So usually, like you'll be doing some you know, research or something and you're like, oh, I wonder how many people click on this button or like navigate to this page and then navigate to this page. So you'll then go and like write a doc and say, hey, I want to track this event and you define the event and you say what properties you want, you write up that ticket and then you put it in the backlog and try to get it prioritized in an upcoming sprint, right? And then engineer picks it up they ask some questions or like oh it's hard to do this way you go back and forth you fill it in and then finally they implement the event you wait for it to get released uh and then you wait for the the data to populate and then you have your answer and it's like four five six weeks since you you know wanted that answer um and so you you've lost all that time and you, you don't have an answer to your to your question um and so you'll just do that over and over again um, and is you know it's it ma it it's good to still do that over time, but sometimes you just need an answer right right away. What's the what's the impact to you as a PM when you have to wait? Like you, you I mean, it's probably obvious, but I just want to hear it in your own words. Like when you have to wait a month or more to get an answer to a question, like what's the what's the why do you care? Why do you want to why do you want to move faster? Yeah, it means it means that like I'm working on a project and they either have to move forward with like less confidence, higher risk, uh, less information, um, or or I or I say, hey, well, we're gonna hold and wait for this thing, and then I find something out and I'm like, dang, I wish I did that four weeks ago. I would have like prioritized this higher. And so the impact is really just like in 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 speed and speed and understanding and if you don't if you don't have those uh those things and in startup world that like that that stuff matters and in a month your your team could totally shift priorities and and you've lost the opportunity to 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 work on something that you might think is really important yeah and i think it's probably worth just showing quickly for everyone here like what you were talking about you know that that process that could take a month or more versus i just want to get the answer you know, now, like I want to run that analysis and mix panel right away. So, uh, Mapolo, I know you use Fresh Paint. We're running Fresh Paint, the product on Fresh Paint, our website. So I'm just going to like illustrate to everybody here what that looks like. Um, yeah. And this is what you meant, right? Like maybe, maybe I'm building a funnel here. And for, for us, you know, we need to have conversations about how Fresh Paint works. So we have a, we have a sales led go to market strategy. 
And getting a demo uh, clicks is a super important one, just as a point of illustration. So as Mapolo said, instead of submitting this ticket to engineering to code this button click into the code base, we can just do it right now. So we'll just do, we'll just call it product school demo click. And I'm going to limit it to the home page. So we know that that action on that button click is related to the home page. And then I'm just going to save that event to fresh paint. And immediately, there's no wait here. We can go into the library and search for that action that we just set up. And we even capture a screenshot here so you can see what that event means. Because sometimes people are like, what does this mean? What, what event is Mopolo tracking here? Or Mopolo is not sure. You can know because we capture the screenshot and highlight the button. And the example here is like, we've got a couple of these events. We'll just repeat that process to add them. And we can actually then push that to mix panel with one click. And the second part, as Mopolo highlighted, is you, you want to run the analysis today. You don't want to wait another two weeks for data to populate. So you can immediately backfill that data. We hold up to about 12 months worth of, of da previous data because we've been tracking this event in the background. Or you can just limit it to a period. And so now that event is going downstream to Mixpanel, um, where Mopolo or other PMs could, could jump in and, and basically like build that funnel or build that insights report and, and get your answer today. So, so that's what you were talking about, right? Like yeah. the month journey and everyone, <laughs> just we just did that. So you could just see what we're talking about, but that was minutes. Like if I have to set up maybe five or six events, okay, maybe it takes me a half an hour to plan it out, go in and configure it. But like, that's an answer I'm getting today as opposed to a yeah. month. Yeah. I mean, this is a great example. I mean, funnel, funnels are always easy examples in, in my opinion, but like yeah. you, yeah, you get, you book, you book a demo. And, and if you want to answer the question, like, Hey, what, what percentage of people click book a demo and then actually submit their information to book a demo, that's two events. You can quickly send that event. You can see how long it takes between those events. You can see, you know, how, what percentage of folks drop off, what percentage don't, which rooms, you know, complete it, what browsers are on, all that. You can, you can get that instantly in like, like 30 minutes. So it's like a, you know, it's a, it's a huge win. And, and, you know, I, I love auto tracking for that reason, a quick, rough, dirty, like, you know, relatively reliable. You can make a decision based on that data. There's always going to be a need for precision events. Like, you know, for example, let's say you sent out an appointment text confirmation that event is maybe sent from the back end you're going to have to fire a precision event for that it's not like a button click on your website and if someone responds and says hey yeah i'm confirmed for that appointment that's another precision event that you'd fire from the back end so it's it's a combination of the the precision and auto tracking but there's so many times where you just need an answer like now and that's when auto tracking is so useful yeah you beat me to the punch i was going to ask you the <laughs> question around the elephant in the room is the misnomer with auto track is that yeah auto track is not helpful because it doesn't solve all those precision events and and both of us share the same worldview with like yeah that's the wrong way to look at it like no one's saying that auto track solves everything that that's why companies like fresh paint take a hybrid approach where we can auto track so you can move quickly but then we have the ability to set up those server side events so you have the best of both worlds and over time as your as your data set matures Right. You, you, you may capture more events, uh, precision track, but you're always going to iterate. You're always going to launch products. You're always going to yeah. make changes. <clears throat> and that's where the benefit of auto track comes in because you can actually like get that feedback loop very, very quickly. So you know exactly what's working. And, and maybe when something's working, then you want to solidify the data set around that and, and you have the flexibility there. Yeah, yeah, 100%. For so many of just the quick, simple product questions and answers, you know, auto, auto tracking is great. I think one thing that a lot of PMs do, or a lot of, I think a lot of folks in general is they over index on, 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 on the quality of the data or getting the exact answer. So most of your decisions, like you're not necessarily going to have like all the statistical significance, or you don't need data that's like, 100% accurate all the time. If you if you knew it was 90% accurate, you could make the same decision, right? So um, I often found that we over index, we spend 90% of our time trying to make that 10% of the data perfect, when really, 
you know, we can just make a decision on the, on the 90%. Um, and so, yeah, auto tracking is something that, that allows you to do that. That's huge. Well, I've really enjoyed the combo. I really appreciate you uh, investing some time. I, I think people, I learned a lot from you and I think everybody else here did as well. So thank you, Mapolo. Always appreciate you. Yeah, thank you, Ray. Take care. Take care, bye.